morning and welcome to Jew in the City Speaks with your host, Allison Josephs, also known as Jew in the City. We think a lot about how Jews and particularly Orthodox Jews are cast on screen in this organization. Unfortunately, most depictions of Jews on TV are not so good. Additionally, there's been a topic of conversation that's come out in the last year. I think Sarah Silverman really drew attention to this in particular, which is how come we don't always see or often see Jewish characters played by Jews. It seems like male Jewish characters will play kind of the nebby role, the nebbishy guy, the self-hating Jew. But in a lot of cases for female actors, the heroines are often played by non-Jews. There's a Hollywood line that says, um, think Yiddish cast British, which is like sort of this, I think, internalized anti-Semitism that a lot of people that started Hollywood had, which is that if we want someone appealing on the screen, um, we need to put someone non-Jewish. They look better than we do. But um, with this conversation of Jews, more Jews being on the screen and maybe even more Orthodox Jews being on the screen, um, because again, if we want authenticity in our characters, um, can it be done by people outside the community? Perhaps, um, but maybe having people inside the community play those roles could even, you know, give us more of an authentic representation. Um, got connected recently with an amazing woman named Esty Rosenblatt, um, who is a Lubavitch Hasidic woman living in Brooklyn, and she has two children, two, am I right, two, who are yeah. both in acting. Yeah, my big boys used to do it as well. Okay, fine. So Essie, thank you so much for, for joining us today. Okay, so now how, how many have you had in acting and how many are currently in acting? I have four children total. All four have okay. been on screen. My Got big it. boys, now that they're, you know, transitioning into Masifta and when they started getting into more middle school, we decided as a family that it wasn't right for them. Um, you know, we, there weren't so many parts that they could play with a yarmulke on or in a sneeze way that we felt was appropriate. And also we felt that their yeshiva studies at that point in time were took precedence over an extracurricular activity such as background work. Makes sense. Um, so tell us how did um, these Lubavitch kids living in Brooklyn end up getting onto shows like uh, The Marvels and Miss Maisels and some other big shows and movies out there? How What's, what's the background of this story? I would say probably when my oldest was eight or nine, he's now 15. I was on Facebook and I saw an ad that from a casting company, Grant Whiffley, who they're amazing to work with. They were casting thin built Caucasian children. I had some skinny white kids at home. So I thought, you know, let's give this a try. I didn't grow up religious and I missed that sort of extracurricular activity stuff. We don't get a lot of that in our schools, unfortunately. And I wanted to give it to my kids and see how it would go and just give it a, give it like a one, one off try. Uh, it ended up being in a movie called Rebel in the Rye, which did not do so well. I don't, it came out at the time um, Kevin Spacey was getting in trouble in the media and it was starred Kevin Spacey. Uh, and the kids ended up being uh, background actors um, portraying survivors of the Holocaust being liberated from a concentration camp. And uh, what year was it? How old were your kids? Oh, I think my sons were probably eight and six at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and what was the audition process like? It was background work. Background work is generally like they look for a casting and you send in pictures and then they pick you from that. Background work doesn't really generally have much of an audition. Mm -hmm. And how long was the shooting for? It was a one day shooting. Um, it was shot in Staten Island in, I think it's called Snug Harbor or Stag Harbor. They have a big a uh, botanical garden place out there that happens to have a very large smokestack that looks like it could be the background, unfortunately, of a concentration camp. And that's yes. where they shot it. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> it was a little bit like uh, you showed up. I didn't quite know that that's what they would be doing. And mm -hmm. it was a little bit like, whoa, but they, who, you I don't didn't know. They, you didn't even know that they were going to a, a Jewishly themed movie when, when you saw the, um, the, the ad. I knew it was Rebel in the Rye, which was based on J.D. Salinger, who wrote um, Catcher in the Rye. I didn't realize that that's what, you know, it said World War II. Got it. I probably should have okay. put two and two together, skinny children during World War II. Yeah. Um, they were so good and so nice, and we were treated so well on set. They were the only two kids on set. Um, mm -hmm. They were very, you know, I said we can't film on after, I usually don't do after one o'clock on Fridays, and we don't do Saturdays, and these are our holidays. 
Uh, and they were very respectful of that. And we were out of, I think it was filming on a Friday and we were out of there by, I think one o'clock. And it was, um, they were very nice. They wanted to make sure the kids felt comfortable on the set. And it was a very nice first experience. So after that- You got the bug, you got the bug after that. And so what, what was, what, what the came boys, Yeah, that? the boys really enjoyed it. So after that, we did a few more things. Uh, the boys were featured in um, The Greatest Showman. I don't know if you know that movie. Uh, yeah. there's a, one of the tent scenes where there's two little boys that stand up in the front clapping and you can see they have blue yarmulkes. So yeah. it's very cute. Um, representation. You know, okay. Yeah. It wasn't even, um, the original costuming wasn't even with the yarmulke. We were sliding it back on their head and the, somebody, I don't know who's one of the, the costume person, I don't know, said, Oh, I love that. Or the director said, I love that. Leave it on. Wow. And you know, let's, oh, they, they made it vis visible and that's what we did. And it was really that shot for five days. Like there was a lot of um, background work. They don't talk. And if you don't know what you're looking for, you don't see them, but they're there. And what does it take to get a part like this? Are, are there things that they auditioned for that they did not make it into? Cause that's a big movie. Um, well, that was background work. There was 250 background actors on set at some time. Okay. So background work is not so hard. Okay. Um, to get jobs, but you know, you still have to submit photos and they're looking for a certain look here, or a certain look there. Uh, we did audition for a Steven Spielberg movie. I don't think it ever came out. I don't know if it was ever made. Um, mm -hmm. They got to the second round audition and then we decided not to go any further uh, mm -hmm. because it was going to be filming overseas for a long period of time. And at that point we just weren't, wasn't something we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, how about uh, Mrs. Maisel? What happened with that? So we stopped with the whole acting thing for a while with our kids. It wasn't something we were doing. And then I think it was last the year and a half, two year and a half ago, I think in 2020, November, 2020, I saw on Facebook, it popped up Grant Whiffley casting. They were looking for twins for background work on Miss Maisel. And I was like, I got some twins, you know, let's try it again. Let's see what was the chance of it actually going to work out. So I submitted um, the girls' photos and they love them. And I sub then they asked for videos. So I took videos and sent them into casting and casting for them onto the appropriate people. And they love the videos. And then they asked for some more complicated videos, like have the girls interact with people. So their speech therapist was there at the time. And so we did a video of like the speech therapist giving them directions and then following the directions. At that time, they were two and a half. So they were little. And uh, Yeah. And they're just very like friendly, sociable girls that love people and mm. have a smile on and are just generally like, I got very lucky, are just generally very happy little girls. And they liked the videos. So then they asked us to come down to the studio. And because it was still the height of COVID, we ended up doing the, like the meet with the directors and everything in the parking lot. Mm. And it was fine. They love the girls. They were very happy. They played with them. Like the girls were very willing to like go to strangers I don't know if that's a good thing but they're willing to like you know <laughs> run over and shake the hand of you know or, or run over and play with somebody who they didn't know and they were able to we got a a, um, a side a side is like like the script it's just called a side so you have like the script and you have the line so I was able to get one of my girls at the time to risk like to, to do the lines which was a big deal at two and a half to be able to like I would give her a line she would respond and so they were very impressed with the fact one of my girls still wasn't really talking very much, um, which is fine. Now they don't stop talking and um, they were able to do that and they were really, they really loved them. And so we ended up being cast as Esther Maisel for the Marvelous Miss Maisel season four. Amazing. Wow. Very yeah. cool. It was actually um, really and, a big deal. And uh, no, that's really, that's very, very cool. Um, how did the Jewish stuff play out in, in that uh, show in terms so, of your observance? In terms of my observance, I want to say, hands down, the nicest cast and crew. Like, I, we haven't had a bad situation ever, which is really nice in this industry. Um, cast and crew were amazing. There were a couple scenes where my girls were sitting at the dinner table having to eat. You saw what I think in episode three, she's sitting there eating berries. Uh, the person who the props person who's in charge of food. Uh, he, I think he researched kosher because he was like very up on it. Like there was a scene where they're eating dinner. I don't think it's come on screen yet. Um, mm -hmm. there's a scene where they're eating dinner at the table. The kids are eating dinner. And I said, I said, you know, my kids can't eat what you're going to prepare because we keep kosher. And he said, okay, I'll, I'll work it out. He's like, give me a list of restaurants in the area. So yeah. I had to give him a list of restaurants in the area. 
And he ended up ordering from Mendy's in Crown Heights. And he's, he's like, look, here's the bag. Here's the receipt. It's sealed. He's like, I know. He's like, I looked it up. It has to be double wrapped before I warm it up. And I said, yep. Okay. So he warmed it up in the microwave. He was double wrapped and he wanted me to make sure that it was sealed before he put it on the plate. And they're very, very, very careful about not like overstepping and, and making sure that we were taken care of very well. Um, you know, when you're on set, you normally there's crafty, which is like food and drink and everything. And we don't keep kosher. We keep kosher crafty. <laughs> crafty has kosher. prepared food for lunch you get a nice hot lunch you get yeah. you know snacks and everything some of the snacks were kosher stuff we would normally buy um but the hot food obviously wasn't so when we were on set they would always order from uh, i think it's mozzarella in um in williamsburg and i would just tell them like a couple days before they'd be like okay you're coming to set the 16th 17th and 18th let me know what you want us to order and it'll be in your your dressing room when you get there and they were always like very wonderful about Kashras, very wonderful about Shabbos, um, you know, Pesach, Purim, very, very good about that. Like if we had a film, I think we had a film one time like Air of Purim and uh, they ended up just moving it to a different day because it was going to be too hectic and, you know, they didn't want to make stress us out. Um, very, very, very respectful. Very, I was very, very impressed. I love it. I mean, you know, we're used to certain industries being able to make these accommodations, you know, in law, for instance, in New York, you'll see a lot of Orthodox lawyers, a lot of Orthodox doctors. Um, it seems like the entertainment industry is one of the last places where they're not doing these accommodations so well, but it's, uh, it's wonderful to see that, um, that they're doing this for you. Um, how many episodes were they in? They were in, you can see her head. I think in the first episode, you can see the back of my daughter's head. That was like the first episode. Actually, um, Rachel talks about it on the Jimmy Kimmel show. Uh, she mentions it. And then um, they're in episode three. And I believe they're in one or two more episodes. We filmed a lot. And I'm not sure if they used everything that was filmed, which is happens. They cut things. Like, I don't know if the dinner scene was used. Um, I, we did some work in a studio where my daughter can be, heard talking but you don't see her so I'm not sure what else is gonna like if we're gonna see them again or not um but they were little so they were two so it's hard to get two-year-olds to do everything you need but my girls thank god which is another reason you know we're doing this is they're very good on set they they take direction well they listen to people they like people they don't get scared they're, they generally do what they're told um I mean they are three-year-olds we've had one of them had to pretend to be sleeping um when they were working on manifest a few weeks ago and it was very hard to get her to pretend to be sleeping. Um, but it, you know, we're very happy. Thank God so far. And, uh, tell me, tell us about manifest. We tried out for the main role of the, the little girl Eden and, uh, we didn't get it. That was a very, you know, a, a very long audition. Um, we didn't get it, but we got the it's called uh, photo double work. It's kind of like stand in work. It's you're not background, but you're not principal and they love it. They have a really great time doing it. Uh, they didn't get the main part because they're still little. They got um, the main part was given to five year old twins who are great um, and obviously have the ability to do more in the way of like script and um, and that kind of stuff more than a three year old can do. And um, so are these the main things that your uh, your kids have been in this movie, uh, Mrs. Maisel uh, manifest? Yeah, that my other son did. Um, I, had a son, I have my older son played a, a dead kid on uh, the blacklist. Um, I didn't know he was going to be dead either, but he was supposed to be a hospital patient, but he was dead. And um, my other and then my 14 year old when he was probably seven or eight was in. Uh, what's the name of the movie? The Land of Steady Habits. He has a speaking part um, in that, a small speaking part where he plays the, like the main character in like a flashback. And then my boys, like I said, my boys aren't doing it anymore, but my girls, they're going to continue doing it until we feel that it's not really appropriate or until we find a show that is appropriate for Orthodox kids at that age, which I would love to see. Yeah. Do you know of other people that are in your situation, um, you know, from kids and uh, doing nope. this sort of thing? Nope. Oh, wow. None. Sometimes my friends are like, oh, I'd love to get my kids involved in background work. And I'm like, 
it's a lot of work for background work and background work it doesn't pay well and you know you're an extra which is fine and it's a great place to start um but there's not like a lot going on with background work so I don't know any other orthodox Jewish people doing this right now mm -hmm. um and but you do know other orthodox actors I know other orthodox adult actors yes uh, mm -hmm. one I know Ellie the king of Broadway um and that's and I think oh I know Simon File I think is his name I met him on Maisel last year um but other and than that not but you said that you, there's like a Facebook group of of Orthodox actors, or is that just Jewish actors? Of of I believe it's Jewish. Of uh, Ellie started it. I'm not sure okay. if they're all. I think they're Shomer Shabbos, like observant actors. Okay. I don't know anybody on there really, and it's not a very active Facebook group. But I'm on there just to be on, like you know, in case anything comes up. But there's, you know, there's not so many cast. There's no castings for like. Orthodox kids and sometimes if they are they're you know I remember seeing something where they were looking for um orthodox women and children but the it was being shot on Shabbos so, yeah they really have to I mean I appreciate the the kosher food um and then working around your schedule but um there's still a cluelessness in a lot of these uh <laughs> the way these things are done and I would argue you know and what we're doing with our Hollywood Bureau by the way is not just talking about you know, the stories and authenticity in the stories and diversity of, you know, characters and not sort of the same tropes over and over again, but also um, accommodating our religious needs. We're in an age now of accommodation of all different types of people's, you know, uh, vegan needs and different, you know, it's, it's definitely um, long overdue to make room in the entertainment industry and in media in sports in Hollywood. Um, and you guys really seem like you seem like you're leading the way there. Um, do you have any opinions on uh, the Sarah Silverman Jew face thing? Do you think that Jews should be playing their own parts? So I think Tony Shalou, who we actually worked with on Maisel, who is amazing. And I feel like he was like a grandpa. He was so sweet. I remember him helping the girls get into a chair. I mean, nice, nice man. He kind of said it in a way that he said, you know, as an actor, he was trained to play parts. And I agree with him on that part. I do like, I don't think anybody could play Midge Maisel better than Rachel. I think she's an amazing, amazing Midge Maisel. And I love the way the characters play, the way the actors play the characters on that show. I love the fact that Joel's parents are like kind of a little bit more like, you know, loud Jewish people and Midge's parents are like more like refined. And I love that it shows different. Like it wasn't just like one flat note of what Jews are in that show. And I think that that's really beautiful. I feel like if you're going to have somebody like Joan Rivers, like Joan Rivers, I grew up with Joan Rivers. Joan Rivers was like, I invited her to my bas mitzvah. Like I love Joan Rivers. I would have loved to see a funny Jewish woman. I don't know if it would be Sarah Silverman, who it would have been a funny Jewish woman play Joan Rivers. Like yeah. that would have been, or even I love Helen Mirren. I think she's great. She's an amazing actress, but should she be playing Golden Meir? Yeah. No, it's a good question. I mean, I, it's interesting. I've been mostly paying attention to um, the um, sort of orthodox depictions over time. Now that I haven't noticed, you know, sort of over the top Jewish depictions or anti-Semitic type of comments that are made sometimes in shows. Um, but I've heard of a lot of non-orthodox Jews that um, see the show almost like as a minstrel, that it's that the depictions are so over the top and so overdone and watching non-Jews do them, it's sort of like they have like a Jewish affect um, without sort of doing it um, authentically, that if it's a Jew, not that a Jew can't overdo the stereotype himself. I mean, we've certainly seen that, but that it feels, you know, less like um, laughing with us and more like laughing at us. And obviously these are topics that are up for debate. Um, but we want to see more like authentic representation. You know, I'm thinking as I'm talking to these uh, networks now, studios now, um, I would love to be able to give them more people that could, uh, you know, audition that could be in these stories about themselves. Um, do you have a pitch to parents out there or to people that are considering going into acting who are Orthodox, why they should consider this for their children, for themselves? Well, for your children, that's a very personal decision. Um, you should speak with, with your husband and your rub. Um, as for your children, your children, you know, I feel like we shouldn't stomp down our dreams because we're Orthodox Jews. Um, I feel like when I became from, I lost a lot of myself, not knowing how to, 
incorporate who I was, a dancer, I played ice hockey in college, I danced in college. I didn't know how to incorporate that into a Jewish way. And I wish I had had more guidance in that. And I would love to see my kids have access to the things I didn't have. Um, First of all, there's actually an Orthodox um, ice hockey player who I interviewed and I can connect you with her afterwards if you want to, <laughs> and she, she, they accommodate her Shabbos needs. So that's kind of an interesting thing. That's no, but great. I totally, yeah, I totally um, agree. I was really also concerned about how do I incorporate my old self into my new self, which is why, you know, dinner in my house, most of the time is, you know, uh, kosher versions of the trade dishes I grew up eating with like, you know, soy meat and cheese and um, because that's just, those are the recipes of my childhood. And so when my husband first heard that we're going to put like, you know, soy bacon on top of this and, you know, cheese on top of the soy meat, he thought it sounded disgusting. And now I've converted him into uh, <laughs> loving fake trade dishes. So yeah, I totally, so what you're saying is as opposed to trying to recruit just regular people who are happy, not acting to go into acting, you're saying if someone has an acting bug or an acting passion or even an idea don't let your observance stop you. You should know that there's more and more um, understanding uh, within these spaces now that this can be done. Um, yeah, that I be feel like to. they're really starting to make it so that an Orthodox Jew can come in and, and act. Um, as far as portrayals in Orthodox of Orthodox Jews on screen, we have a long way to go, a yes. very long way to go. Um, that really needs to be you know, tweaked and fixed so that we're not a gimmick and we're not like stuck on payas. My boys did a show. I don't remember what show for Comedy Central. Maybe it was. It was a long time ago. And I remember there were Orthodox Jews in the scene. And I was like, one of them was actually Jewish, but he was not Orthodox. He's like, oh, yeah, I go to a payas maker. I was like, they have a payas maker because he's not doing a very good job. And the other guy was a guy who played Santa regularly. Um, so that I was a little bit like, what? Hmm. I was like, I know Orthodox Jewish guys that would probably come do this if they knew this was available to them. Hmm. Um, I feel like it's an outlet that people could really use. And there's so many beautiful women who do acting and singing and dancing um, in the Jewish community. And there's men who probably would love to do it as well. And I feel like we have a whole untapped market here. Um, yep. You know, why can't Orthodox Jews be involved in mainstream media and mainstream uh, TV as well. And I'm hoping, you know, in the future, there'll be actual roles for Orthodox Jews. Maybe we'll have a sitcom with like normal Orthodox Jews. Like, oh, you're just the neighbor who's Orthodox, but you're not weird and you're not gimmicky. Right, so, so for in my perspective, I think an entire show about Orthodox Jews is too much because um, it could just end up, if you, it's your, if all the attention is all on religious Jewish characters and someone's got to be a weirdo. I would much prefer to have an Orthodox Jew in a cast of characters in an office, in a hospital, you know, within a neighborhood where it can yeah. be sort of a diversity of characters. I think that's a much safer bet than sort of the entire world of just our world, because that seems like that um, it would be hard for it not to go badly. Um, but yeah, I totally <laughs> agree. And look, this is really, we're in, we're in the middle of these conversations right now with the powers that be. Um, and I think they're listening, you know, first about if you want us to be involved, you need to understand that, you know, we need to be accommodated. I think the thing about all the successful Orthodox Jews I know is that they give it their all 24 six. So even if they're not, I mean, other than Tishrei, the month of Tishrei during the high holidays is really rough. Um, yes. And that's just, you know, but we can be more available during like the Christmas season, uh, although I guess they're shut down anyway. But um, yeah, I think um, I think with this sort of newfound um, understanding and appreciation of inclusivity and diverse opinions and life experiences, um, we certainly should be in, you know, in the role. The challenging thing is that a lot of these bad portrayals are done by fellow Jews. And I would, I'm learning as we're building this bureau, by the way, is that there's a lot of non-Orthodox Jews that are quite unhappy with non-Orthodox portrayals. And so we're kind of busy noticing all the payas and sort of all the bad Hasidic takes. Um, and for a lot of, you know, secular Jews, they're feeling pretty, you know, cringe, feeling cringy around, um, you know, sort of the secular ethnic um, over the top, loud, cheap, you know, um, those type of stereotypical things because they're not relating to religious things as much in some cases, they're sort of seeing those, um, over the top Jewish qualities, um, especially if they're done by non-Jews, um, feeling like, ooh, that feels kind of like you just, you know, gut punched me. Um, that feels kind of personal. So um, I think these conversations, you know, are long overdue. 
Um, I think that, you know, we have to continue them, but um, it's a really great example, um, you know, of you. And what, like, what were your kids' feedback? Like the, the younger ones must have had a hard time, you know, expressing themselves, but for the boys, any feedback? My boys love being on set also, and they're actually really not super happy that we don't let them do it anymore. It's, you know, they've kind of gotten used to it. Um, it was a little bit of like, why can't we do it too? Like, why isn't it sneeze for us? Like, where, where are parts for us? Um, we had explained to them that at this point in time, there weren't, there weren't parts for them. Like at that point, like, you know, nobody, we, we signed up with a casting, like a, somebody who does casting with kids who aren't signed, like with, a, with who does signed uh, for a gap agency, like for gap, I think it was gap. Um, gap, I don't think ever had anything to do with it, but the casting um, director, you know, my boys are good looking kids and, she didn't want them. She's like, can you send me pictures without yarmulkes? Hmm. And I was like, no, right. No, sorry. And my kids didn't understand. Like, what do you mean? Like there's a kid with a hijab or there's a kid like this. There's like so many, so much diversity, but my yarmulke is, is too diverse. Like it's not good enough. And I think that that was something that was hard for my boys to understand. Um, occasionally they'll still be like, Hey mom, can we do some acting? And I'll be like, I don't know. It's, you know, the, also like the yeshivas aren't super excited about it. Let's just be honest. They were really, I think we were told maybe there's something more facetious you could do like a boys choir. Um, <laughs> but we also had a dog. So um, already it was, uh, you know, a problem. Um, All right. But, but, you know, because as they get older, maybe there will be more parts that will open up that could fit into a more modest type of lifestyle that, you know, they could choose that. And I think that's also, by the way, another consideration, not just, you know, Shabbos, holidays, kosher, but like, you know, um, a diversity of even like story choices where, you know, there are more wholesome type of, uh, of stories told. Yeah, I would love for my kids, my girls to be able to continue doing this, you know, even past an age where we're like, we'd be like, okay, maybe this isn't so sneeze, like, but have sneeze options for them to, to be involved in because they love it. Like I said, they, they get so excited. I'm like, okay, we're going to go to set tomorrow. And they wake up in the morning, like, we're going to set. And I'm like, yep, we're going to go to set today. And they really, they have a good time. They make, it's also a kid of Shashem because they're such happy girls and we come and we're like, I'm a nice person just in general. Like I talk a lot and I'm friendly and I bring things to, you know, the PA who takes care of us when we're there. I, you know, I'll bring a, you know, we were supposed to go last week, but we didn't. And I was going to bring Hamantash in, um, you know, that kind of thing. So I think that that's like, they get to see an Orthodox Jewish family come in and we're not weird and we're not smelly and not our kids are normal. Being Orthodox, right. What? Beautiful. Yeah. And you're happy being Orthodox. You're happy who you are. Well, you know, amazing job representing, you know, in the space on the screen. Uh, we wish you continued Hatzlacha. We wish Hollywood continued, um, I guess, exploring this issue and taking these, uh, these topics really seriously. We'll do our part. Um, and uh, yeah, all the best. And we would love you to come back with some more updates, God willing, over time. God willing. Hope we get some big parts. Okay. Thank you so all much. Right. Best of luck. And uh, you can catch us same time, same place next week. Bye-bye.